Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody doing? And I hope fine. I truly, truly do. Thank you for joining me. Got a fun, feel good. I don't know if fun's the right word, but maybe a feel good story of the day. And we need more of these stories. We need way more of these stories. This one here is sexual predators. This is a sting out of Polk County, Florida. And this Sheriff Grundy Judd is amazing. We need more of him across this great land of ours in every city. Because he's doing he's doing the work. I if y'all Google him or just on YouTube, there's there's a slew of videos of him doing things. But uh, this here, I saw, now this was posted two days ago. Obviously, I'm always late to the game because, you know, if y'all have uh, been to my channel before, you know, I got a teenager and running around and sometimes I, I miss a lot of stuff. I miss a lot of stuff, but it's okay. It's okay. We're going to catch it. And this guy, man, I've never seen anything like this when when uh, a sheriff is doing a press conference. I mean, we've all seen them when things happen and things. And then he's bringing, after these arrests, he comes out and he's like, bam. But I was like, this is awesome. And these dirt bags that he got. Let's get into this. Let's do this. Here we go. So with that, on September the 19th to the 25th for seven days, we did two operations at the same time. One was a human trafficking operation that resulted in 219 arrests, and you covered that in the media. The other that was the sexual predator operation that resulted in six arrests. These six people here. I want you to get a good look at these folks because these are people that thought they were going to come have sex with children. Oh my God. They came to a strange undercover location thinking that they were going to encounter a 13 or a 14 or a 15 year old child. They're dangerous. If it weren't for the outstanding work of the men and women of law enforcement they absolutely would have attacked children had it not been an undercover operation that's why we have to praise these guys this is this is the work this is what we need to see being done always getting it done not this hate on police when they're doing work like this this is this is what we need to be happening and this is what we need to praise. Right here. This right here. We were joined by our colleagues because no one agency can do this by themselves as successfully as we can working together. The Orange County Sheriff's Office, the Lakeland Police Department, the Hillsborough Sheriff's Office, the Tampa Police Department, and the Lake County Sheriff's Office joined us in this operation. And as nice. a result, we took some very, very bad people off the street. So I want to introduce you to them. I want you to see what a pedophile looks like. I want you to see what someone looks like in some of the words that they say whenever they're caught thinking they're going to have sex with children. This is what I'm talking about. I've only ever seen him do this. I mean, calling them out, showing their faces, telling us about their arrests. This is incredibly amazing. The first one is Douglas Cooley. He's 26. He's from Apopka. Oh, go on. He's employed by the Discover Aftercare. You see, this is a program that is on the Orange County School District's property. To be specific, the Clay Springs Elementary School, where aftercare is provided to children. He worked in that program with children. And now 
he shows up at an undercover operation to have sex with a very young teenage girl. Oh my God. He thought he was going to meet this 15 year old as a result of a bad stepmom operation. That's right. He was going to pay stepmom to have sex with a 15 year old. I'd like to underscore that this program that he worked for is a contractor or a vendor, not the school employees, but a contracted service to the Orange County school system. So he thought he was going to meet this 15 year old little girl and have sex because the bad stepmom arranged it. He was going to pay for it. He said that I'm interested, but is she the only girl you have? Did you hear, did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? He wanted to know if this was the only girl that they had. And then our suspect, Douglas, asked the stepmom, uh, are you her pimp? Oh, my God. The child's 15 years of age. He traveled to this location. He was also charged with human trafficking as well. Oh, he was wearing a D.A.R.E. t-shirt. For those of you who are not familiar, D.A.R.E. is a program that's taught to teach children how to be safe and to resist drugs. He was wearing that t-shirt. He's currently in our jail. He said, my life's over. Kinda. We plan to send you to prison for a very, very long time. What you did was a serious felony, but because of the work of our detectives, and I brag on them because they're simply the very best, that night, it wasn't a real child that he was able to groom and convince that it's all right to come over, or it wasn't a real stepmom that was offering up her stepdaughter for sex. He didn't. And, and these are scenarios that happen all the time. It's just mind boggling that they would believe it because I guess they've done it before. Some mom gonna pimp out her kid. Good Lord. didn't know that, but he does now. And then there's... Your you know, I I hope they put him away for a long time. All of these six people. Hero Muniz. He's from Kissimmee. He's 40. He was a laborer for Brand Safeway Scaffolding. They fired him. They were not amused. He's married. That's oh. right. He thought he was meeting a 13-year-old child, a little girl, for sex. He said he wanted to teach her how to have sex, but he used much more graphic terms than that. Now, if I told you that, you'd just bleep it out and wouldn't tell everyone. Some of y'all may even cover up some of these faces, but, you know, shame on you if you do. Oh, snap. But if... When asked, well, what would you do if a man was wanting to do this to your daughters? And we asked that question because we discovered during the interview with him, he had four daughters between 9 and 16 years of age. What would you do if a grown man, 40 years of age, wanted to come have sex with your daughters like you wanted to have sex with this 13-year-old? He said, well, if they tried this with my daughters, he said, I would hang them. Well, that's against the law. We can't do that. But we can prosecute you and send you to prison for a very long time. But while he would take the ultimate violent act against someone wanting to hurt his daughter, he was doing the same thing to someone else's daughter. By the way, his daughters are being screened as well. He's posted bond, and I find it interesting that he's posted bond. He's out. He's out until court day. But he traveled, and he's also charged with attempted lewd battery. Now, I want to take this a step further. 
Keep in mind what he said he would do if they did it to his daughters. So why he is grooming what he thinks is a 13-year-old, he sends photos of his little man. You hear that? He's a little man. He, the little man didn't have any clothes on. It was nasty. It was a nasty little man. But yet, it's okay for him to do that to somebody else's child. Once again, he's in, locked up. He confessed. He's lost his job. And we intend to do our best to send him to prison. Yeah, but he's out on bail. Why did they let him out? Now, I, I am happy that he's covering this. This is phenomenal. This is phenomenal, beyond words. I just don't understand how the court could let him out and what he did and what he was going to do. He shouldn't have been let out at all because he's, he's probably a flight risk. He could go to prison for a long time. He sent lewd pictures to a child. Well, uh, a fictitious child, but still. And then there's Trevor Walker. He is a maintenance guy, maintenance tech at a public warehouse over in Orange County, Orlando area. He wanted to have unprotected sex for three hours with a 15-year-old girl. He went for this bad stepmom deal. He was going to pay her $400 stepmom so he could have sex. Now, our undercovers talked to this guy for three days before he showed up. And you might ask why. Some have to build their nerve up. Most enjoy the pursuit and the grooming as much as they do the sexual encounter. That's what we find a lot with pedophiles. It's the pursuit of their quest as much as it is the sex. He even went so far as to say, well, what would it cost me if I spent all night with a 15-year-old girl? All right, here's his moment to not travel, okay? He's already in trouble for what he said on the computer, but here's his moment. He said, now listen, I don't want to get caught up in any of this Grady Judge Sting business, and I don't want to see... Chris Hansen. He got to see both. Oh, snap. The great oh, snap. Sting and Chris Hansen was there. So he's not only on local television, he's going to be on a program about how he's a pedophile and he's dangerous. And after we caught him and he figured out it was a Grady Judd Sting, and Chris Hansen was there to talk to him. He said, well, I made the decision to come here. I'm just stupid. What do you think? Stupid is being nice. You're an absolute moron. He also added that he wanted to have rough sex with this 15-year-old child. He's in jail. There are no 15-year-old children in jail. And this is just a nasty, dangerous person. That's right. He's disgusting and repulsive. I should say more things, but I don't want to get in trouble on YouTube. But y'all know what I mean. You can say without saying. This disgusting. Something needs to be done. And I don't think... I had seen something years ago... That there's no recidivism rate for pedophiles. They they cannot be rehabilitated. I'm saying I'm I've said that wrong. Re the the recidivism rate for them is almost I guess a hundred percent. They go in jail, they come back out, they do it again. They can't stop. They can't be rehabilitated. It's late here, <laughs> but seriously, that's man. I just hope he gets locked up forever.
Then there's Douglas De Silva of Windermere. Newsflash, I know it's hard for you to believe, but he's illegal from Brazil. He's an Uber driver, and he also cleans houses. I didn't think you could be an Uber driver if you were illegal. You can't take an Uber directly from Brazil here, so they had to hire him after he got here. He's married. He traveled to have sex with what he thought was a 15-year-old female, and he was going to pay $220 for that experience. Once again, he talked to the stepmom. He wanted to have different kinds of sex. Now, we can't go into the details for obvious reasons, but he said, hey, I'll up it from $220, stepmom, to $250, an extra $30, if I can have unprotected sex. Oh, good Lord. This 15-year-old child. He's also charged with human trafficking. He confessed. He's been here four years, and he's waiting on his green card. Well, just thinking out loud, I believe even this administration won't give you your green card since you're now on a federal ISO. But we'll have to wait and see. I don't know about that. We know they end up shutting down the border. And we've been too soft on crime. They need to, they need to lock these people up forever. He's in jail. We want him to go to prison. Yes. Yes, we do. And then last but not least, well, no, we have two more actually, but I'll tell you about our veteran. He's an Army veteran. He's currently a student. He was a mechanic in the Army, and he's got his VA benefits, and he was learning to be a Harley-Davidson motorcycle mechanic. You know, it's been my experience that Harley riders are real men. They're not pedophiles. They're not sex predators, and they don't want anybody that's a pedophile or a sex predator working on their Harley. But he wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old. And he made the statement. Okay, are you ready for this? He made the statement. I don't know who made him a great historian. If this were 200 years ago, our age difference wouldn't make any difference at all. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> wow. Well, it's 200 years later, and it makes a lot of difference to us. He confessed. He's currently in jail. But here's the thing that amazed me. He just moved to Davenport from Kentucky. I got to welcome him to Polk County when we arrested him. Oh. And on the way, while he was traveling to have sex with a child, he called his five-year-old girl and his six-year-old boy up in Kentucky to wish him good night. Damn. Wish him good night while he's on his way to have sex with a child. Damn. Look, folks. These folks all have a hitch in their giddy-up. They're, they're not good people. Now, here's our last one. Ferris Clisey, he's married, he has adult children, he's an Uber driver, he's on public assistance, and he wanted to have sex with a 14-year-old female. What is up with the Uber drivers being pedophiles? Now, he said, he told us he was on public assistance, that's how we know. So, did you take some of that government money that we all paid taxes with? to have sex with a female, put gas in the car, or was that extra money? He's Syrian born, he's naturalized, he is legally in this country. And at the end of the day, he made this prolific statement. Trust is like a glass. Once broken, it will never be the same again. What's that about? Well, he can trust us that he's locked up in jail and we won't break his glass because he can trust that we're always going to arrest when he does something like this. He is toast. Now, he has a $26,000 bond, but he's out. 
What the fuck? So if he didn't use the twenty, if he didn't use the public assistance money that he said he got that night to get there to have sex with a child, did he use some of that public assistance money to bond out of jail? I don't know what the math is on that. If it's twenty six thousand, they don't really have to pay the whole thing, right? But he's, I agree with the sheriff, where the hell did he get the money to get out? And who the hell would bond this piece of shit out? He's on government assistant. How the hell did he get out of jail? They shouldn't even have gave him bond. I don't know why any of these people are having bond. They, they should change the law on that. There should be no bond. These people were caught red-handed. It's not like we didn't know that they did it and they're being held without due cause. Definitely, there, there's a due process here that should be taken. We don't know. But I find it interesting. He needs to be on public assistance. But he has money to bond out of jail for being a child predator. Where the hell did he get the money? We will continue these operations. We're going to protect the children, not only of Polk County, of Florida, but around the country and around the world from these kind of deviant actors. That night, they would have all attacked children had it not been an undercover operation and it had been a real child that they managed to groom online. Are there any questions? Mike had a question about the human trafficking charges at the location. Yes. What, what did they do that was really the The ones that didn't get a human trafficking charge talked directly to the child, groomed the child. The others offered to pay the stepmom to have sex. So that way, they were engaged in the human trafficking aspect. Okay. Anything else? I have a question, Sheriff, just about the um, the apps and the social media sites that uh, you used. Uh, were those popular, um, <coughs> like, uh, everyday apps that people use? Can you um, explain Certainly. We, we don't tell what sites we go on. But unlike child pornography where people can go to the dark web and make it really difficult for us to figure out who the child pornographers are. To get to children, you've got to surface into gaming apps, social media apps, and that's where we find them. Sometimes it's gaming apps. So you've got to be careful, even if you're letting your child on a gaming app online that they're not being groomed. And if someone that you're playing or the child's playing a game with online wants to all of a sudden talk to them offline from the game, that's a clue. And anytime parents allow children to use social media at all, they've got to monitor it nonstop. Because these folks are out here lurking around on these social media apps of different kinds to find your child, to groom your child, to have sex with your child. I don't think that reporter should have asked that question. I mean, think about it. Why would you ask him where they're getting their information or how they're luring these these pieces of crap <clears throat> to children? It needs to be a secret. I don't want to know how they're doing it because I don't want them to know. Why, that, that reporter should have known that. That was just common sense. Don't tell us what, what your tactics, what you're doing. I mean, he said broad cross social media. I mean, that was a given. How's he catching them? But he's not going to tell them which app he's using. Is the Chris Hansen production crew a part of this whole operation? The Chris Hansen production crew was embedded in this operation. Nice. And certainly we offer that opportunity for all of you. Many of you have done this in the past, and you're welcome at any of our operations. Have you ever been involved with them before in the To Catch a Predator series? No, not, not in the To Catch a Predator series. When they were doing the To Catch a Predator series, the, the processes and systems that they were using with other law enforcement agencies was not one that we would use in our operation. And the way it works with whether we embed you 
are Chris Hansen and the and his now to catch a predator series, whatever he calls it now, is that he has no interaction with the suspects until after the criminal investigation is complete and they're waiting on transport to the jail. Then we allow him to talk to them. And we'd allow you to do the same thing. Okay. Well, it is a feel-good story. And it's it's sobering, too, thinking that these pieces of trash are out there pre- preying on our children. It's disgusting. Parents out there, you like he said, you have got to monitor your children. I do the best I can. My son does not have a, a phone. He's 13. And he's not getting a, a phone. Now, we've talked about getting him. There's a watch. Um... I don't know if it's a Google Watch or if it's a an Apple, but all he'll be able to do is text and use the phone, and then there's parental controls on there to where he only gets a set of numbers that he can call. Like he could call me, he can call his grandparents, uh, his his cousins, his aunt, just family, and and text. That that would be because who else does he need to call? He don't need to be. Nobody needs to be calling him. And, well, you got to do something, people. I mean, remember back in the day, we didn't need a phone. Now everybody's like, well, it's easier if he has a phone and they can call me. Well, how did we survive? I I don't even know. I I don't know how we, we survived through any of that. But that's something for you guys you could look into. It's those devices uh, we're thinking about getting him one for Christmas. If he's still, if he's being good, he's making good grades right now. He keeps everything up, you know, cause sometimes he can be a turd. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we're trying here on my part and I don't let him play online games. I, I do not let him play online games. I played, uh, Sky, Skyforge and, uh, it's an MMO and the way they talk on there. Now, he was wanting to play, um, what's that, Fortnite thing? So I had gotten online, this was like a year or two ago, because he's like, oh, I want to play Fortnite. So I look it up, on, and I started watching some videos that other people were making, you know, to see what the game was like. And man, the way they were talking, I was like, I'm sorry, you can't play that game. They, they had little kids on there that were posting videos on YouTube, just cussing like sailors. I was like, oh, no, sorry. You know, maybe when you're grown and you got time in your day uh, to play video games, <laughs> when you got a job, you know, then 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 you can do what you want to do when you're when you're grown. But uh, right now, no. And plus, with the predators, so parents, you you got to be vigilant. I know it's. You can't even look look at it that it's a pain. It's something that we have to do to protect our kids. It's really what we have to do. We just can't get lazy on this. You've got to uh, watch, check their phones, check check their history, check what are they doing, who who's talking to them. It's like you have to protect them from the predators out there. Well, I'm going to close this out. Thank you for joining me. Feel good story of the day. We got six scumbags. Now, I am am disappointed that some of them are still out, that they got out on bail. There should be no bail for these people. Zero bail. If they go to court and they're found innocent, fine, but I doubt that because uh, they got stung by Chris Hansen, so it's not looking good. Right there should have said no. But anyway, you guys have a wonderful evening, and thank you for joining me.